In this video, we'll look at the dislocation dislocation interactions in FCC metals. We will start by looking at a simple case. Assume there's no dissociation, and the dislocations we're looking at are perfect dislocations. In FCC metals, the 111 planes are the slip planes. And from Thomson tetrahedron, we learned there are many intersections of those 111 planes. In the example shown here, we have the first dislocation gliding on 111 plane with half 1 bar 1 O Burgers vector. For the second dislocation, it glides on 1 bar 1 1 plane and with the half 1 O 1 Burgers vector. The figure on the right shows the side view of the figure on the left. Now we have those dislocations gliding on these two slip planes and they meet at the intersection. If we do a simple addition as shown in the blue box, you will get the final dislocation Burgs vector as O11. Before meeting each other, these two dislocations, they will glissal, means they were able to freely move on the slip plane. However, after combining into another dislocation, the dislocation Burgs vector is not on the slip plane anymore. Then the configuration is Cecil, means it's an immobile. There is a special name for such Cecil configuration called Lomer lock. Lomer lock is one of the most important factors why you have strain hardening in FCC metals. It is interesting to note the formation of Lomer lock is energetically favored. You can look at the strain energy reduction. By forming a Lomer lock, you effectively reduce the strain energy by half. In this example, we're looking at perfect dislocations. Let's take a step further by looking at partial dislocations. For FCC metals with low stacking fault energy, the perfect dislocation with the half 110 Burgs vector can dissociate into two partials with 1 over 6 211 Burgs vectors. Let's look at the example, which is very similar to what we saw in the last slide. The only difference is in this case, we have two partials and a stacking fault for each dislocation. Before meeting each other, these two dislocations will glissal on their respective slip planes. But after meeting each other, the two partial dislocations will combine to form a new dislocation with 1 over 6 or 1 1 Burgs vector. And this configuration is also Cecil. And right next to the Cecil dislocation segment, you have those two stacking faults appearing to be joining each other. Again, there is a special name for this configuration. This is called the Loma cultural lock. Since the stacking faults around that Cecil dislocation looks like the carpet around the stair rod, the partial dislocations are also called the stair rod partials. This is all I like to discuss about the Shockley partials in FCC metals. However, Shockley partials are not the only partial dislocations that can be present in FCC metals. There's another type of partials called Frank partials. Let's just quickly look at the main differences between these two types of partials. The Shockley partial is our old friend now. We know that the stacking of the 111 planes in FCC is ABC, ABC. Shockley partial is when you make a mistake in the stacking. In this example, you have ABC, then B, then ABC. The Burgers vector lies within the slip plane. Therefore, Shockley partials are mobile. In contrast, for Frank partials, they are introduced when you either remove one 111 plane or insert one 111 plane. The Burgers vector does not lie on the slip plane. Therefore, Frank partials are Cecil or immobile. They can only move through a process called climb, which we'll discuss in one of the future videos. We also learned we see Shockley partials in FCC metals with low stacking fault energy. Then when do we see Frank partials? Frank partials are usually observed in samples either being irradiated at high temperature or quenched from a high temperature. At high temperature or in the irradioactive environment, large amount of point defects such as vacancies can be generated. These vacancies can self-organize to form vacancy cluster 
then collapse to form those frank partials. I took this example from the Introduction to Dislocations book, and here you can see the frank partial dislocations as well as stacking faults bound by those partials. We have spent three videos on the topic of dislocations in FCC medals. I hope you have developed a good understanding in this topic. In the next video, we'll shift gears and discuss dislocations in BCC medals.